Hmm. Today we're going to talk about the butternut tree. This is a tree that's sort of scarce in New York State. And uh, I'm working today in a woods that has more butternut than I've seen in any woods for the past several years. So I couldn't turn down this opportunity. Butternut bark is very similar to walnut. It can be tough to differentiate from walnut because it has that woven, interlaced kind of look to it. The biggest way to tell a butternut from a walnut is that, especially on the upper limbs of the tree, the ridges of the bark will flatten out. You see how, you know, you have the furrows, but the, the, the tops of the ridges are flattened like that. It's quite different than a walnut. You see how black walnut has that same woven appearance to the bark but the ridges won't be flat like they are in a butternut. Well, they'll be coarse like this. Even on the upper reaches of the tree, the, the ridges on the bark will be coarse. One thing that's contributed to butternut scarcity is that starting around the 1990s, it got hit with this canker that uh, shows up as these black eruptions in the bark. And it just, uh, over time, it weakens the tree, kind of makes the bark loosen and fall off. And uh, it's, it's rare to see a butternut that isn't stricken to some extent with this canker. You can tell that butternut is in the walnut family because in the pith of any twig, any limb, or even the center of the butt log, it'll have, it'll be chambered. You see those little horizontal diaphragms that run up the hollow center of it. Black walnut and butternut will have a chambered pith. When I built these Windsor chairs, I used butternut for the seat because butternut is known for being a very good carver's wood. It just carves very well. And uh, it matched well with the rest of the chair because this is walnut. Every other part of the chair is walnut. Um, that's not butternut's natural color. It's much lighter than walnut. So this is butternut with a stain over it. And you can see that butternut leaves are also very, very similar to walnut leaves. You got a compound leaf, you know, you got a central stem that pairs of leaves radiate from. One thing I noticed from this is that the pairs of leaves are anchored opposite each other. Uh, on a walnut, they might be opposite each other, but they might be staggered slightly as well. Like, see this leaf here? Now, these, this pair of leaves is not quite opposite the stem from each other. But most of them are. Each individual leaflet is going to be toothy along the edge of it. The underside of the leaf is going to be lighter than the top side of the leaf. When you feel it, it's, it's slightly hairy. There's no waxiness to the leaf at all. We're in luck because it's a time of year when we can pull the seed pods off of the tree. The seed pods are shaped sort of like dates. And they'll be green like this when they first fall off the tree. They'll turn darker as time goes by. They are hairy and they're sticky. Like they're, they're, they have a stickiness to them that gets, just only gets worse after they've been off the tree for a while. Now, I've tasted butternut and I've tasted black walnut. And I remember thinking that black walnut was sort of bitter and thinking that butternut was very, very tasty been a number of years since I've eaten either one so I'm gonna collect a bunch and do a taste test after I get home. So here's a black walnut seed pod and here's a butternut seed pod and in hand they're quite different from each other. Um, you can see the butternut is much more oblong than the black walnut and after they come out of the pod it's uh, it's even more pronounced. The, the black walnut is not hairy and it is not sticky when it first falls off the tree and the butternut is hairy and sticky. Both get browsed pretty heavily by any number of seed eaters after they fall off the tree.
It's just a terrific woods to study these butternut because they're just specimen after specimen that we can look at throughout here in various stages of health. So right here we got three butternut all in a group. That one, this one, and this one. Butternut is never the dominant tree in a woods. You'll never see an entire stand of butternut. It's always interspersed with other trees in the woods. But like its cousin, the walnut, butternut does exhibit alleliopathy in that it releases a toxin that, is, that uh, poisons other kinds of plants and trees from around itself. It doesn't seem to have much effect on all the briars and brambles that surround these trees. I've been marking timber in this stand all day and it's like walking through knee-deep snow. I've been walking along the edge of this orchard and I noticed that the butternuts that are growing on the edge are, are doing comparatively well. That's because butternut uh, is rather shade intolerant. They can't stand being overtopped by their neighbors. It's a good sized butternut tree. It's about a foot and a half in diameter trunk. And even though it's quite large, you can see the flattened ridges of the bark fairly close to the ground. And see that right there is the canker that I was describing. It's, it's hard to find a butternut that doesn't have that canker. This tree is on the edge of an orchard and it's completely draped with grapevines. Vines have worked their way into the crown and are kind of choking this tree out. Yeah, this particular woods is full of butternut, which is just uh, kind of unique. I don't stumble into this many specimens in one spot. You can see this tree is sick. And uh, when they get sick, their crowns will be sparse, as it is with this one. You can see the sparse branching at the very crown of this one tree. It's the beginning of the end. Well, I wanted to culminate this video with a taste test of the two different kinds of nuts. It's a bit of a failed experiment. First of all, I, I wound up dyeing my fingertips. I kind of knew that was going to happen. I wore rubber gloves and they just shredded within the first couple nuts. So uh, the husk of a, a walnut will dye things dark brown and the husk of a butternut will dye things sort of yellow. Uh, so I, I'm stuck with uh, yellow brown fingers for a while. And also it's too early in the season to pick them. The nut meat had not fully formed inside the shells so I cracked a few open. There just wasn't anything to eat in them yet. So, oh well. Thanks for watching.